Good morning. I'm Brett, Useful Aircraft. Hey, I stuck the files out for the uh, simple plank yesterday, and I was pleased to see that a handful of you guys turned around and downloaded them, um, and maybe are starting to print the, uh, the STLs. Um, I look forward to seeing your builds. I really and legitimately would love to see some photos and whatnot. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, I don't know. Post them on Instagram. Send me links. Uh, I do have an Instagram. Um, I'm not very good at using it, but uh, Useful Aircraft is uh, is the Instagram. But uh, maybe I'll try and be a little bit better about getting stuff out there. So without further ado, to give you an idea how I put this together, um, let's go ahead and uh, tear it apart. Uh, to show you, and again, this is a, a well-flown airplane. Remember, I'm going to show you these index marks. Those index marks, upper surface of the wing, line up with the uh, sidewalls of the fuselage. Uh, because we're going to go ahead and start removing parts. Here we go. Anytime I take these airplanes apart, I plan that I will reuse everything involved. So, that's the uh, camera top hatch. A little rubbing alcohol will get the parts to release that uh, involve hot glue. That's the camera pin that I just pulled out, as you can see there. And now the mount itself will slide out from the carrier assembly, just like that. So, um, pull your forward vent hatch. I reuse that. Remember, this tab at the back of that, that's going to interface underneath the leading edge of the wing in this slot. And that'll be the means to secure the uh, battery hatch um, at the aft end. At the forward end, the means that is used to secure that is the camera arm. The camera arm will pinch underneath this forward closeout, this guy here. And if you see, there's marks of compression because this camera arm, you get right into it, has a small tooth. You can just see that tooth jutting up behind the camera itself. And that squeezes the arm and helps to uh, reduce jello, honestly, when you, um, when you have it mounted securely. Number one thing to uh, eliminate jello, balance your props. Um, you know, if there's no vibration in the first place, you're going to have less problem with uh, vibration issues down the road. So again, put this aside. We're going to reuse that at some point. Um, I'll take the. Uh, I'll eventually use some hot glue. Uh, Remove what I do with that. As I mentioned here, I've got uh, isopropyl and a squeeze bottle. If you do something like this, especially in a warm climate, you can see I've showed that before. I punch a hole in the top of my squeeze bottle. That way, uh, when thermal expansion happens, you don't end up with isopropyl uh, dripping out all over your workbench. Um, that stuff is flammable, burns clear, not a lot of fun. It's a pretty good solvent, uh, especially when it comes to hot glue. As you can see here, the hot glue on the underside of this is uh, just peeling off. Um, so, you know, comes off like nothing. Anyway, um, now, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, control horns. Um, you can see the servo push rods are in there. Just to give you an idea on that, let's take a measurement. Um, center on center. Let's see if I can show you this. They're 42 millimeters long. Um, so, and that's measuring from the center point to the center point. The center point of the servo to the center point of the uh, control horn itself. I strongly advocate you to pick up these guys. They're um, Z-Bend pliers. Uh, when you use these to get a consistent bend, take, and again, this is a survey flag that I'm using. This is what I use by these at uh, hardware stores. Um, and I make all my control rods out of this. Put I'll show you. Put the, there we go, the flag in so it's sticking out, and then I'll square it up on the table. You can't see that. Take a surface and square it up just like that. And that ensures that the end of the survey stake is flush with the end of the uh, Z-Bend pliers. In doing so, and you'll have to do some experiments, I've measured with this particular band of pliers, um, it's 10 millimeters of lost material on either end. 
So if I want a 42 millimeter control rod, and I use that method and those pliers, I add 10 millimeters for either end, and I'll end up with a perfect 42 millimeter control rod for uh, center on center. Um, so that's just something to think about going forward. We gotta get the wing off, so what I'm gonna do, we'll probably fast forward through this, um, pull out the uh, set screw in the uh, center of the servo. You know what I'm talking about, that guy there. So These servos are gonna be hot glued to the both the lower surface of the wing and the uh, fuselage itself. So <clears throat> just, you know, pay particular attention when you go and you pull them apart. Make sure you don't just grab the wing and yank it off and in doing so, you know, yank the uh, servo wire out. Um, the other thing I can tell you with this, you wanna make sure that this uh, wing to fuselage joint is secure and you have more than enough hot glue in there. Um, so, you know, when, before you put your control arms in place, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm pulling out these. That's my control rod for one side. I'm gonna set these aside because, and this is the beauty of this. Once you've built one of these things, when uh, you take it into the dirt because you're doing something silly and having a little bit of fun, uh, just pull all the parts out. The next build will take you, geez, I mean, I don't know. I can put one of these things together in 30 minutes or so. I mean, less than that probably. I mean, it, it's just so stinking fast. The airplanes are simple. So as you can see, I pulled the uh, control rods out. So the flight control horns, they're still in there. I don't really try and recover those, if I'm honest. Um, you know, some of the, uh, this is the, the, the top layer of that. That's only about a millimeter of, uh, you know, 3D print. Um, you know, so I don't worry about it. You'll deform them, you'll bend them, you'll probably end up with more problems. So the ELRS antenna is back here. That's how I mount mine. You can see it, it sticks up just a little bit right there. That's kind of nice. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to remove the upper wing. You can rip it, but like I said, just pay careful mind, those servos have wires attached to them. So we've made sure that we've removed the control arms, spray it with a little bit of hot glue, and there's the wing. You notice the uh, center section of the wing behind the elevons, that tore off, that's fine. Stick that aside. That's done. Um, what I want to show you, is this will give you an idea for your builds. Pull this out. I want you to peek inside, so I'm trying to keep much of this in place to see placement of things. Um, not a lot inside here if you build this um, in a, a radio controlled version, in the sense that you just have the two servos. There we go. Let me show you. So that's the center section. You can see the two servos, those go into these servo cutouts, okay? Um, for my 42 millimeter center on center measurement, and again, if you happen to use the, uh, you know, the same nine gram servos, and let's face it, these all probably come out of the same jig somewhere. Um, I have my servo wire exiting forward, servo, the actual uh, actuator is forward in the fuselage, and uh, that way you end up with a slightly longer, you know, this 42 millimeter center on center control rod. The reason being is if you put it aft, you know, it would be aft by, well, let's see, you know, approximately another 10, uh, another 10 millimeters. And in doing so, these just get, these control rods get so impossibly short. For me, I find it hard to work with, you know. Six of one, half dozen of the other, do it any way you like, you know. Okay, so battery stop. Do not hot glue the battery stop in until you have the airframe completely assembled and you put your actual battery in there. At that point, determine where the center of gravity is gonna be and check the index points on the underside of the wing, the CG marks. Once you can have the airplane balancing on your fingertips, um, you know, when you're holding the airplane just like this, on, that, on those center of gravity points, note where you have the battery, and then I hot glue this guy in. The center of gravity is gonna be, you know, somewhere about there, pretty much anywhere you put the battery is gonna bring the CG forward. So, you know, the, uh, I don't know, a couple grams of hot glue you put in there in order to add that CG, um, or add that battery mount. Um, 
it's really not going to have a big impact on it. So I wouldn't be too terribly worried about that. But yeah, like I talked about, I got to pull the hot glue off of that. That's my battery mount. This, and I typically, as you can see, I poured a bunch of hot glue on that thing. I just squirted it on and it got warped. Um, that happens. You know what? I got plenty of these things. I'm going to reprint that. So I'll go ahead and uh, let's just remove the, the rudder so you can see in there. I want you to notice the avionics step that I talk about here, the shelf, that lives right there. It basically abuts against this fold line, okay? Um, what I usually use it for, if you notice, I have my, let's see if I can get a view in there, high voltage um, wiring on top and my low voltage wiring underneath. The further apart you can keep high and low voltage, um, and particularly in the back, the really noisy wires, the uh, three-phase AC wires, the further apart you can keep those, uh, the better off you're going to be. If you notice weird twitching and stuff like that, um, chances are you're having some electrical interference issues. So, um, you know, I use that to keep my, because remember, I'm using a BEC in these. This is what's called, you know, an opto ESC, which I had to look that up. Um, it used to be because it was optical coupling between the two sides of the, uh, the, um, ESC circuit between, I guess, the AC side and the DC side. Uh, it sounds like that's no longer um, really what is meant by it. Nowadays, it's pretty much any ESC that does not have a uh, BEC. And dude, I could be totally wrong. That was, you know, two seconds of reading on uh, RC groups. I like these smaller ESCs. Um, I like them for weight. I like them for I find them to be far less prone to, uh, you know, dissipating heat. But again, my airplanes tend to be smaller. So if you bury a giant, you know, old school ESC back here and it doesn't have the airflow that it needs, you're going to have issues with overheating. If you're flying along and your motor is stuttering on a regular basis, like a, you know, one second interval, dunk, 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 that's not the motor failing. That's a computer giving you a signal saying, help, I'm overheating, okay? If all of a sudden power cuts, motors don't suddenly cut to 30% power or something like that. If you have some throttle response, same thing. It's an indication that your ESC is overheating. I've seen guys try and, you know, make arguments that, no, there's other issues. And, you know, if you unplug it, yeah, if you unplug it and let it sit, that ESC is cooling down. It's getting below that uh, temperature threshold, and then she's ready to go. So if you have any of those problems, you know, it, chances are your ESC is overheating. Again, that is why my motor mounts sling that ESC externally and keep it in the airflow. So, um, you know, just something to think about. Before you pull off this, you know, uh, top plate back here, the fuselage top plate, let's get that ELRS antenna out of the way. So I'm just going to grab that. Hopefully I don't. No, let me check. Nope. Got a little hot glue on there. So, and I'm not afraid to, you know, this is 91% uh, isopropyl. So there we go. ESC antenna's out of the way. I'll grab this. And this top plate goes all the way back to the motor mount. So um, actually, I'm going to see if I can just pull this top plate off and we can see inside. I like the comment from someone earlier saying this looks like you're you know, eating seafood when you're tearing these things apart. As a fat man, I, I will agree with that. Okay, so the rudder itself, um, here's a unique perspective. I pulled that out and let me grab my 3D printed rudder. Here's, a, here's the STL of the rudder. This, um, this line here carries forward the fuselage line. So when this mounts in there, that will rest right on that lower surface. The rudder should be square if everything is correct. Um, before I install my rudder, just in case I miss it later, I take hot glue and I kind of give a light coating to that surface on either side, and I put a line of hot glue on the bottom here and the bottom there. That way it smears in, and when it makes contact with that lower fuselage skin, it helps to uh, secure that and keep that in place. The lower fuselage skin does not have any contact with the, uh, with the motor mount. That might be something I'll, I'll revisit if, if, if it becomes a problem. Um, but I honestly really haven't had much issue with it. Um, but it, uh, so this tab hanging down here basically makes that rudder far more rigid. Um, in other aircraft, you know, I've had to reinforce it um, using a popsicle stick. Um, 
and you'll see that in some of my other designs where I'll have something like that. Usually that's um, for two purposes. Usually it's also because I use that popsicle stick in the tail as a tail skid. But um, yeah, that's the point of this tab. Just make sure you get some glue, particularly on the underside here at the very bottom. That way it sticks to the uh, lower skin of your fuselage back in the tail section. Motor mount, here we go. I'm gonna pull this off now that we've talked about it. Again, actually before I do that, you'll see on the rudder, I have my signal wire. See the black and white wire on this side? Separate from the, the, uh, the uh, power, the DC power going back to the ESC. It's DC up into this point, and then it's three-phase AC going to the motor itself. So go ahead and pull this guy off. Be careful, again, wires are involved. So just trying to... And doing this for the camera is a little bit different than, you know, when I do it for myself. Um, normally I wouldn't take anywhere near this long. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my avionics shelf. At this point, I'll undo my uh, my motor. For me, my motor goes into channel one, and then the servo on the left side of the airframe um, that'll go into the next lower lowest number servo position. So in this case, that's number two, and then my right hand servo goes into the into number three. Um, as I mentioned, I run a BEC, and let me show you how I do that. Um, Let me get a little bit of hot glue release. There we go. Pull out my avionics. There's my receiver. Okay, nothing left in there. You can see, again, that shelf mounts back here. You know, back end of the fuselage. And again, placement of all these things, there is enough rigidity when you glue this into the wing, the fuselage is not gonna squeeze and pinch. If you have a reason to move that shelf to a different place, by all means do it. Put the battery where you want, put your flight controller where you want, you know, your receiver where you want. The only thing you have to be absolutely fanatical about is getting that center of gravity correct. You get that center of gravity correct, you're gonna have a great time. You, uh, too far aft, you know, you're gonna have an unstable monster. Um, too far forward, you're gonna have too much flight control drag, you know. Um, that's kind of a cool thing that they're doing with, you know, more and more modern jets. And I don't know, they've done it in the past, eliminating trim drag of control surfaces by, uh, you know, center of gravity manipulation while you're in flight. Um, and what's it got them? Well, on airplanes that go intercontinental, you know, it'll buy a couple hundred more miles of range. It's really remarkable. So again, my, um, we talked about it plenty. I'm using the Beta FPV ELRS PWM receiver. Um, let me show you my wiring with regards to this. So I do have an extension here. Um, I could have soldered that in and, and not put that. I don't mind the occasional extension, but this is the power wires going to my ESC and there is my little tiny BEC. And I love these little guys. Um, I find them to provide good clean power um, and not to have issues, you know, when you have an ESC failure um, this way, at least, it's not all in one sudden death, you know. So, anyway, that's uh, that's the guts of the inside of these airplanes. And if you play this video backwards, you can see how they go together and you can see what happens. I'm going to do a, uh, a build video next, but I think you probably have learned more from that teardown video. Um, again, I thank you for your time. I sincerely thank those of you that chose to join me on this ride and... Uh, <laughs> by either just, you know, simply commenting or uh, subscribing, and, and especially those that purchased the files. Um, you know, it means a lot. Um, economically, in terms of how much it moves the needle, it, it's not about that. It's just, I feel like there's people participating in the journey. I feel like there's folks with buy-in, and, you know, I want to make sure that you get good value for that. And in doing so, it makes me really want to bring other airplanes, and believe me, I'm, I'm staring at plenty of other airplanes. Um, that I want to bring to you guys, and I, I think they'll all bring joy to you. So I appreciate your time. We'll get into the build video next. Take care.